Uh, well, thanks for that kind introduction, Demir, and welcome everybody. Uh, hello. This is my first webinar, so please go easy on me. <coughs> um, I, just to start off with, we'll uh, just have a quick look at the main agenda of today's webinar, which is why implement a warehouse management system. And uh, I guess first of all that I'd like to um, just highlight that logistics efficiency has never been more relevant in this current environment. Uh, some businesses are going absolutely gangbusters, while uh, others are really struggling in this uh, in this current environment. Uh, for example, uh, we have two of our, our customers, our largest style customers, and between them, they share 85% of the toilet tissue market. So their business has, has never been busier and uh, we're doing a lot to support those guys uh, at the moment. Whereas other businesses, we have customers in the retail uh, apparel space, for example, and uh, yeah, they are, are really struggling. They're, they're doing it tough. Uh, however, the logistics challenge uh, remains the same for, for both environments, whether you're really busy or whether you're um, uh, struggling to, to keep the business afloat. If you're delivering product to your customers, you, um, you need to address that challenge. So, uh, yeah, when your volumes are high, uh, you have to have greater efficiencies in, in your operation. And when your, your volumes are low, you really have to keep a tight rein on the costs. I guess that, uh, that goes without saying, but that's the, the challenge in today's environment. So the focus today will be more on a philosophical approach to why you should perhaps look at implementing a, a warehouse management system in your business and what we'll be doing in later opportunities, webinars and direct calls is uh, more detailed technical explanations of the warehouse management system solutions. Okay, so the uh, simple question that I'll pose to the, the group today is why implement a warehouse management system? And it's really, really simple. Uh, to save you money in your uh, operation. Really, that's the, uh, the only uh, reason you would look at implementing a warehouse management system. So, <coughs> I know that's um, probably a bit obvious and I apologize for that, uh, but I'll attempt to, to, uh, to get past that and give you an understanding as, as to uh, how these things are achieved. So the real question is, how does uh, a warehouse management system save you money? And the simple answer again is via process improvement. Sorry about that. Okay, so look, I'd be uh, confident in saying that anybody on this call uh, wouldn't dis would disagree if, if that if you improve your processes, you would undoubtedly save some money in your operation. Uh, for example, if you could increase your output or double your output uh, by keeping your resources as as they are, and just by adjusting some processes get some improved productivity, you would um, undoubtedly get a, a benefit to the bottom line. A good example of this, and it's a simple one, is uh, the picking operation. Um, if you have a current pick rate, assuming you measure your, your pick rates, a lot of companies don't, and that's something we'll, we'll talk about later. Uh, if you're currently achieving something like 50 to 60 picks per man hour, and you could increase that by improving the way that the pickers access the pick face and the information flow is better and you can improve that pick rate from 60 hits per man hour up to 70 or 80 uh, you're currently finding that you're getting a lot more productivity you need less staff or you're able to have a greater reach to the market by um, processing more orders for your business which is what it's all about so the, the real, real question is how 
does implementing a warehouse management system improve your processes? Now, um, I'd like to bear with, if you could bear with me here a bit, the, there's no single bullet point or PowerPoint slide that answers this question. Uh, and it's really the essence of today's discussion as to um, uh, how do we, how does the WMS improve your business processes? <coughs> now, I'd like to give you a bit of an example of a project we did for Schweppes. Uh, they're now called Asahi. And we implemented a voice picking solution for this particular customer across all their, their distribution centers. Now, the, the business case was done on improvements in the picking process by implementing voice. And to implement that project, what we had to do was take on board most of the warehouse management functionality into the uh, voice picking solution. And when we did that, uh, we found that there was opportunities throughout the entire process to not only deliver the original return on investment for the voice, but once we found out that the, the real issue with improving the, the picking process was to have real time replenishment so that your pick face always had the, the right stock levels and you could fulfill your orders. Uh, we found that that delivered a better or a greater return on, on the, invest, on the invest, initial investment for the voice project uh, by just improving that simple process alone. And there was a lot of other flow on factors from that uh, as well. But let's, um, let's just look at the purpose of a warehouse. And the purpose of a warehouse is to act as a buffer between you and, you, and your market. Uh, if you could operate your business without the warehouse, you, you would do it for sure. No one wants to go to the expense of having large buildings and properties and managing people within a warehouse and equipment. Uh, so the, the purpose is to, to uh, have your stock and be able to deliver that in a timely manner to your, to your customers. And that's, I guess, the challenge of sales and uh, operational planning, but uh, the, comp the competition within your businesses will also drive that as well. If your competitor can deliver it in, in a week and, and you're taking six weeks because you're importing it from somewhere else and processing it directly, uh, the competitor's undoubtedly gonna have a bit of an edge in that situation. So think of your inventory as, as capital. Um, it, think of it in terms of actual cash or bank notes or coins sitting on the racks within your warehouse. And uh, yeah, once you start to look at it that way, you'll, you'll have a, a very, very different approach to your inventory management and the way your warehouse works. Like if, if you're actually the Australian Mint and you're storing the cash on shelves, uh, you, you could imagine the security and the processes and practice in, in place to maintain that kind of a warehouse. And, uh, some of the products our customers have are quite uh, quite valuable. So um, it's a matter of looking at how best to manage your assets within your warehouse and your resources uh, also involved in getting the effectiveness of your logistics processes within the warehouse. Now, you know, I've been into many warehouses over the years and it's quite obvious sometimes you walk in and you, you start to ask a few metrics on the operation and you can tell the, the businesses that have a, a warehouse or a systems approach uh, uh, straight away they have the information they know what the metrics are they know what their performance kpis are whereas the the companies that are still operating on paper-based solutions or excel spreadsheets or completely manual operations um, you'll you know, usually find that they don't have the answers to those questions. And I can understand why. That's a separate task again for somebody to gather that information, analyse it, and make some sense of what to do with that information to get some improvements. So think of the WMS in terms of a, um, a balance and a P&L for your inventory because that's what the, the warehouse management system will provide. Uh, if you, if you uh, 
went to your bank and you said, uh, I'd like to know how much cash I have or if I log in online or an ATM. And they responded with something like, um, well, we think we've got this much, uh, but we'll need to do a stock take. And at the end of the month, we'll be able to reconcile and tell you exactly how much, um, how much you have. So uh, you need to know where your cash is in real time. I understand there's a bit of a problem with the video. There we go. Thanks. So like with your cash, you want to know uh, what your deposits are, what your savings are, what, what your withdrawals are, and it's the same with the warehouse. How much you've received, how much you've, you've stored, how much you've withdrawn or sent to the customers, what are your fees, what are your charges, uh, all those kinds of information that you would normally associate with having a, a bank account, you would like to, to um, have with your warehouse operations as well. So treat, treat your, your, your warehouse like a bank account in regards to tracking the movements in and out and who's, who's touching the product and where's it going and uh, when is it moving. <coughs> So having said that, um, saying treat your inventory like cash, um, inventory accuracy is, is therefore paramount to this, this concept. So a lot of companies will have some kind of business system in the terms of maybe an MYOB or at the higher end an SAP uh, and commonly referred to it as an ERP system and the Inventory within a, an accounting system or an ERP system doesn't necessarily ref, reflect the truth in regards to the actual stock. It might say you have so many pallets of a particular SKU. And um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an example. We had a customer that was in the coffee importing and distribution business. And they had a simple operation, it was block stacking, and it was a manual solution. The, the stock was uh, registered within their accounting system. It told them they had X amount of pallets of each kind of, of coffee, that being a block stack hopping operation, uh, when pallets were, were picked or moved around the warehouse, uh, it was done by the operator's uh, thought process only. And over a period of time, there, we found there was a number of pallets that, that got buried in the block stack and suddenly these pallets were out of their use by date and therefore totally useless. So the ERP says, yep, we, we have some stock, but in essence, uh, you don't really have it. What's, what's important is the physical inventory in the warehouse right here, right now. Can I fulfill these orders? Can I uh, meet the customer's requirements in getting the goods to the, uh, to the market? Everything else is, is, is theoretical. So, um, what is exactly a, a warehouse management system then? And there are a few traps that people fall into thinking that a warehouse management system is, is just a software package. I can download something off the internet, I can put it on a bit of a, a PC or a server or in the cloud, and uh, there I go, I can start scanning things and uh, I have a warehouse management system. System. But there's a little bit more to that. Um, the other approach is that people fall into the trap of looking at a bit of a, a checklist, a tick box exercise of saying the warehouse management system has this function or it's this screen or this report and they go through it and they compare and they line them up side by side and usually whoever has the most ticks wins. Uh, and again, that's not really the, the aim of the exercise. Also, um, and no disrespect to my IT colleagues, uh, they're an important part of the process of implementing a warehouse management system, but to treat a WMS project like an IT project can also be very dangerous. Like once you go down the path with the focus on the IT solution, it becomes more of a, a technical project. Uh, what is the operating system? Um, what, you know, what is the, the, the method of, 
hosting the solution, what kind of, of screens, all these kinds of technical questions come into play. And at the end of the day, it, it, um, uh, it doesn't really matter in regards to uh, whether it's a Windows system or a Unix system or something else. It's, it's a matter of does it deliver a process improvement. So when you're looking at your selection criteria, yet you can look do all these all these uh, comparisons, but at, at the end of the day, the main criteria you should be using is will the WMS vendor providing the solution deliver the process improvements that I'm looking for in the business? Everything else is, is kind of secondary if you don't get those results with the process improvement, because after all, that is the return on the investment. So, um, at, its, at its core, uh, a WMS tracks products by quantity to a location. And uh, that's the, the, the basic fundamental principles of a warehouse management system. But to achieve that uh, in an accurate way, because we've already established that your inventory is, is accuracy is key, uh, you need to, to have a fairly integrated and structured process from the receiving dock all the way through to dispatch. And uh, it does introduce a bit of discipline and it does int introduce a bit of change for the operators. And yeah, I'd, I'd like to give you a little bit of an example of a customer we had that manufactured products within the building industry. Some of those products were built to order and uh, they would get the work order, they would put a, an order onto the factory to build this particular product. Uh, it was purpose built, it would be manufactured, stored into the warehouse, and then when it was time to pick that product, uh, because it wasn't tracked to the put away location and it wasn't, they weren't tracking the inventory by location, uh, they were relying on somebody's memory, they couldn't find the product and to fulfill the order, they would just simply manufacture another product. But lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, that product would turn up and suddenly they've got duplicate inventory or in inventory that is, is no good and they, they have to write it off. So having that ability to track and trace the product and an integrated process from receiving through to dispatch, whilst uh, you might say, okay, my receiving time has increased a little bit slightly. Uh, you, the, the benefits throughout the whole process are, are critical and you'll get a huge benefit to the bottom line. Look, uh, with your cash investments, you want to know where it is, where it's invested, who's handling it, how much it's earning. And are there any fees and charges being attached to that? And that's a little bit similar with the, uh, the warehouse and the warehouse management system. In the warehouse, it equates to uh, task efforts and, and staff performance. So for every, every task, there is a time that it will take to do your receiving or your put away or your picking. And you may not be tracking this at, at the moment, so in regards to looking at the time it's actually taking, uh, I guess you're just looking at the, the staff and how much did they get out that particular day and uh, hope it all goes well the next day. So the information that the, the WMS provides is across the entire operation. So from, from the receiving point of view, we're tracking operators, we're tracking product movements every time a product uh, is touched by an operator, it's time stamped, we know what's happening within the entire operation. So what that does is reduces the reliance on a, any given or particular operator. So they have uh, this concept of um, not being, uh, I guess, needed or the system is being driven by the operator, it's the other way around now, the, the system is driving the operator. <clears throat> and it's the old adage that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. You're just taking a guess on uh, where you may be looking at improvements. But if, you, if you're capturing the data, 
you now have the means to say, where can I make some improvement in my operation? Uh, without customers, the warehouse becomes redundant and um, what you need to do is, is make sure that your service levels are paramount, particularly in the world of, of e-commerce. Uh, a lot of the only differentiating factors between particular businesses is their service level to their customer. So if we can demonstrate that you, you're providing a very efficient manner in which you're satisfying your customer orders, this will pay dividends to maintaining and, and keeping and growing customers. Improving order accuracy is, is a key. And for every time you make an error with an order, you have to rectify, you have to adjust stock, you have to reservice that order, you have to try and satisfy that customer again. So improvement in order accuracy will do, deliver benefits in all sorts of areas within the warehouse operation. And what you need to do is, as a business, have the information to act on. You can look at all sorts of continuous improvements by analysing post operations, but to make real improvement on a day-to-day -day basis, if you've got the information that you can act on now to fulfil an order, that's going to pay dividends uh, throughout the, the process as well. So let's um, quickly talk about the process uh, implementation and by implementing change within a business, it can be a real challenge and uh, everybody is is not immune to that situation. We're, we're generally resistant to, to change. It um, takes us out of our, our comfort zone. We're used to going out on a day-to-day -day and doing what we, that we've done yesterday. And, and that will come over time within the new world as well, but we have to make a change to get to the new process. So people, can be threatened when you start to look at introducing change within the business. And uh, when you look at system-driven processes, you're now taking the ownership from the operator to some extent to make decisions. Where will I, I put a pallet? Where, where will I, which order will I process next? Which put, um, receiving goods will I process? A lot of these um, decision-making have been taken out of the operator's hands and allows the business to um, uh, to pull in people as needed. And uh, if there's change in the staff, the training is is, is very very much simplified, and the, the focus is is now on following the bouncing ball and the systemised process. Um, so it's important we we introduce operators at the coal face to come along the journey on the implementation process. And really, this is, is the key to any successful project. Um, we've talked about downloading software from the internet, etc. But then what do you do with it? It's, it's really recognising going through that operation and looking where the process improvement can be made and taking the staff on the, on the journey to make sure the project is a huge success. So once the project has the, the green light and we've decided to implement a warehouse management system, uh, we need to create that involvement at a very early stage within the project. And this can be done by a, a number of, of ways and identifying some key users and giving them some account about accountability will make sure that there are uh, some leading by examples within the business when you do go live with the system. And they can become the, the trainers, they can become the go to, initial go-to people for help, and even get them involved in maybe uh, selecting the hardware that you'll end up using with the warehouse management system, looking at the, the different form factors. Uh, obviously, there'll be budgetary constraints, but uh, having some involvement at the early stage helps with the operators. The other big point I'd like to suggest, and I've seen it in so many implementations, uh, is not to get hung up too much on functionality gaps. Uh, when you start to look at a, a gap analysis with the current operation versus what the functionality is on the warehouse management system and, and things you think you must have, uh, I, I would suggest that in a lot of the cases, you don't know what you don't know. Implement the system at its, uh, I guess, uh, vanilla stage, if you like, 
and for every potential gap within in, within the uh, the solution, you'll find in 99% of the circumstances there are operational workarounds. So then it will become a situation of looking at the business case for those operational workarounds to say, should I stay with an operational work workaround or should I look at customising the solution? So um, we've covered a, a, quite a, a, a wide range of topics and I'm just starting to sum up a little bit here in that we've talked about the inventory and treating it like cash and knowing where it is and then also the importance of uh, the efficiencies involved with the processes you have and if you can save time it's obvious you will save money. Servicing the, the customers is, is paramount to any business and without customers you don't have a business full stop. Um, having that information within the business to allow you to, to act on improvements is going to be a key in helping you deliver that process improvement. And as I mentioned, having it on, uh, I guess, bits and pieces, Excel spreadsheets, paper-based systems, a little bit in the ERP, etc., cetera, uh, is a task within itself to pull that information together. So having it on a single platform will deliver those uh, uh, information that you need to make decisions to improve the business. So we pose the, the simple question, why implement a warehouse management system? And uh, the, the, the real answer is to enable process improvement, which I guess in itself sounds fairly obvious. And once you implement a systems driven process, it becomes a, a vehicle for change, but it also provides discipline that perhaps wasn't in your business previously. And it also provides that information that'll help you take uh, your business to the next level and ultimately improve your bottom line. So uh, that's the conclusion of the implementation. I've noticed we've got quite a few questions that have come in. We've had a good response to this, so thank you very much for, for attending. And I'll, I'll try and go through as many questions as we can and if we uh, can't address all the questions today I promise that we will get back to you at some time via email or a, a call uh, but your question will go uh, at answered at some stage so I notice here we've got um, uh, I guess everybody gets to this question but we've got a question here from from Brian that says uh, how much does a warehouse implement uh, system cost to implement and um, yes there is a cost but I'd, I'd really like to look uh, at these exercises in terms of, of return on investment and there's another question I note, noticed down here as well that what is the usual turn return on investment so answering both those questions uh, you should be able to realize a return on investment between six to nine months uh, maybe stretching out to 12 months, but our experience has, has been usually six to nine months return on investment. And I don't want to dodge the question on how much does it cost. And uh, there are very different levels of warehouse implementations, uh, tier one, tier two, tier threes, etc. And the simple way I'll try to answer it is that we have solutions that if you say is it in the hundreds or is it in the thousands or is it in the hundreds of thousands we have solutions uh, within the thousands uh, of, of implementing a full solution including the costs and um, uh, as I said the focus is on the return on investment you take the, the investment will take cost out of your, your business I'm getting a bit of a wrap-up here so I'll try and get through to one two more questions uh, how long does it take to implement a warehouse management system usually um, you should allow between three to six months um, again implementing software you can do within a few weeks download it get some hardware operating do whatever it's it's the change management it's the business aligning the processes making sure you have the ownership 
throughout the entire project and the physical infrastructure aligned in regards to your, your labeling, labeling and your warehouse layout. So it, it's not just the vendor supplying the WMS, there is quite a few tasks for the, um, uh, the business implementing the solution as well. So we'll um, uh, uh, look at one more question. Um, what is the selection criteria for a WMS provider? I have touched on that and I've tried to highlight that the whole, um, in my way of thinking, that at the end of the day, you make this investment, there's no reason other than to save money within your operation. So it's who is going to deliver the benefits of the process improvement. Uh, I know that's, a, a, I guess, a complex answer in thinking that you need to quantify that somehow, but ultimately you just don't want something to lie on your your uh, server that's not going to add any any value to your operation. So the focus has been on, on process improvement, and I'll I'll leave you with that thought, and uh, we'll wrap it up there. We'll uh, follow up with emails and uh, other webinar events in the future. And like Damir said. If there are any other topics you would like Dexian to cover, please share that on the on the Q and A tab. So, thank you very much for attending and um, making it not too painful for me. Thank you. Bye.